welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Jessica Henry and I have something kind of fun to show you today. I am not going to do a painting video. I'm going to show you how to pack for traveling with your art materials. And I'm starting in my bedroom because I get asked a lot of times how it is I'm able to travel without checking my bags. So I'm going to start off by showing you how I pack my personal items into my suitcase and then I'll take you into my studio and show you how I pack my plein air equipment in my backpack. So all I do is I just wheel my little suitcase and I got my backpack on my back and it's not terribly heavy either. So I'll show you how I do that. All right, so let's jump in and I'll show you what I do here first. The first thing I wanna show you is my bag. And this bag, I kinda of have it all exploded just to show you what it is like and what it's all about. I purposely chose not black because if you do have to ever check a bag, they all look the same, they're all black. So I chose this really pretty bright green. This is an Osprey brand um, backpack roller thing. And I love it. I, I purposely kept all of the back straps out just to show you how this works you can wear it as though it's a backpack and i purposely chose the backpack one instead they have these without these i like this in case i'm ever somewhere where i need to just you know carry this simply as a backpack there are um, the wheels down here there's all kinds of adjustable straps this is really nicely padded with um, a lot of aeration and so forth and i also have my retractable handle really durable these are really nice backpacks um, so anyway i'm gonna put this stuff here away and then i'll show you more about the pockets and everything inside a bunch of um, miscellaneous pockets and extra storage, more straps and things to hold everything down. And so that's what I'm gonna work around because there's this ridge in the middle. So uh, I wanna begin by putting the really biggest items. I decided to travel with an umbrella for my plein air this time because I am traveling to Ireland and it's guaranteed it's going to rain at some point. So I do want an umbrella. And in, th in this case, it's, I'm not so worried about it keeping the sun off as I am about a little bit of drizzle isn't a problem when painting with oils because oil and water doesn't mix. I have been um, painting out in the rain with oils and at some point in the process, the rain starts to adhere to the canvas and it can be a problem because it gets slick and then you're trying to put paint over it and it doesn't want to adhere. Also in my palette box, it kind of pools up with water. So an umbrella is a really nice idea. And this one is the one, um, the brand is Best Brella and they're pretty good. I have the black and silver umbrella for that. So I'm gonna put this in my pack diagonally just to make it fit. And I'm putting it in this suitcase because um, instead of my planner backpack, because it fits in my suitcase better. All right, now I'm going to Tetris everything around in here. All right, so what I have in my on my bed here, and I will take these apart and show you everything I have. These, the travel items for the actual on the airplane, I'm gonna put on the outside of my backpack, and that's totally acceptable, because they, they pretty much expect that. So I've got, this was actually like a shawl, but it's more like a blanket, and it's really lightweight. In fact, I can crinkle it up even smaller if I wanted to, and shove it in a pocket if they make me do it. But. So this is the necklace, the blanket, those go on the outside. And over here, I have the outfit that I'm gonna be wearing when I'm actually traveling. So I keep that separate. So since my flights are normally pretty early in the morning, I keep um, all of my, once this is all packed, I keep my outfit that I'm going to wear on the suitcase. So I wake up in the morning and everything's ready to go. I, am, I do wear these things when I travel. Um, it's just, it fits right inside your clothes. I got my passport. Um, any cards, credit cards, extra cash, things like that, I keep in here close to me. And a tip for traveling, when you're traveling with cash, have your bundles of it in separate areas. So maybe put some in there, in your like hidden pouch. If you ha wear a belt, get one of those belts that have the inside zipper, like a little secret hiding spot. Put, a, put some cash in there, put some in a pocket. That way, if you do, if any part of your equipment gets lost or separated from you, you have money. So 
um, do that. That's, that's a really good advice. All right, so um, I have my umbrella in here. And so what, this is another really great tip. I've only recently discovered the joys of packing with traveling cubes. Uh, these, I got this pack of three uh, at TJ Maxx, 10 bucks. Uh, so they're from Sharper Image, really great brand. Um, you can find them anywhere. I know Kohl's has them, whatever. Anyway, so these are great because you can just keep all of one particular item in this space. So I have all of my undergarments in here and my belt is in there. I don't have one of those really super cool secret belts, but it's nice to know that all of those things are in one little pack. Um, makeup, ladies, if you're traveling with makeup, try to only take the minimum that you can get away with. I, uh, I have tested this kit and I know that this is just the bare minimum. This is all I need to get by and um, feel like I'm looking my best and for videos and everything. So this goes in wherever I can sort of Tetris it in place. Okay, so I have my umbrella going diagonally. I've put the smaller of these three packs in here. My makeup right there. Um, like that. This is my extra pair of shoes. Um, I keep these in a separate bag. This is just a plastic vinyl bag. I can rinse this out, you know, in a sink, whatever. I always try, do try to keep my shoes separate and I'm only bringing one extra shoes. In fact, these are really sturdy sandals. They are supremely comfortable. I can wear them and feel like I'm not wearing anything. No heels, no nothing else. I will be wearing lightweight boots when I travel and so I'm packing these just for regular wear and that's it. I don't need flip-flops, tennis shoes, anything else. So try to really streamline that as well. Um, all of my bathroom toiletries, I'll show you what I do with this to try to keep all of this really streamlined and travel friendly. Um, just one brush, don't bother with the comb. All of my bathroom things, I only take the smallest amount possible. Um, you could just use whatever is in the hotel if that's where you're traveling to and avoid carrying shampoo and conditioner and things like that. Um, I don't know what the bed and breakfast is going to have to where I'm traveling in Ireland in two weeks, so I'm just bringing some anyway. So I have um, just, I have joint pain spray, um, makeup remover, whatever, all that's in here. I always put my vitamins in a Ziploc baggie. And I do, I, I'm like the Ziploc baggie queen. I love these instead of those nifty little pill containers because anytime you start getting plastic containers, you have air in there. And so however I can scrunch up my space, the better it is and the more I can either squeeze in or um, avoid that extra weight. Flossers, um, just different lotions and so forth. Q-tips in its own separate little baggie. Deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste was in one of these. I do have my little nail kit, just in case. I hope it doesn't get taken away. I do have the nail clippers in there, but so far I've traveled with it and it's been okay. But be sure if you're concerned about any of these particular items, um, check with your airlines, check the websites, on you know, Google, whatever. Like these, I have five little tiny containers in here. I've never had things like this taken, taken away from me. I have heard that you can only have four in one of these little baggies, but um, you know, if any one of these items gets taken away, it's not life or death. So just make sure that you know, you're not gonna upset the planet by doing that. All right, so I keep all this in its own separate little bag. I'll shove that in there. These are, this is a little Tide pen. And if you get a spill or something on your clothes, you just, you can just like marker it and hand wash it in your sink that evening. Perfect way to just save on not having to run to a laundromat every time you get a little spill. All right, so Tide pens. Um, and here, I will show you how I, I'm gonna take this apart and then come back and I'll show you how I fold up my shirts and pants and put them in this. This is all I'm bringing for clothes, okay? <laughs> um, in my, what I'm gonna be wearing though, I will dress in layers for the plane. So I have a big heavy sweatshirt with a t-shirt underneath, jeans. I, put, I wear all my heaviest clothes so that I do not have to carry them in my suitcase. So I will, I will actually take that apart last, but I'll show you what I have in this big bag. Um, this is my biggest bag. And in here, when you're at the airport and they say, please take all your electronics out, I can just take this whole bag out 
open it up and just take my laptop out. I've got my laptop on the bottom right here. They have you take it out of the case. Then um, in this little case, I have my GoPro. So let me show you what I have in here. I have this nice little hard case for it. Um, this is a rechargeable battery pack. I always keep that along, especially for me with filming. So this is this is something that you know most people may not worry about traveling with, but because I do film, um, I like to carry a little bit extra. But you, as you can see, it's really small, really lightweight. So here is the GoPro camera. Uh, all my cords, charger cords, all of those are in here. I'm gonna put that back. Um, in this side, I have miscellaneous other phone charger cords and things. Uh, I have one of these. This has nothing to do with the GoPro camera, but say, you know, a lot of students want to buy the, um, the painting that I do as a demo or, you know, people passing by. This is like one of those credit card square things. You shove it into your phone and you can run a credit card. So, you know, I want to be ready. Um, I have just the GoPro batteries and the extra memory packs and things like that in here. Okay, so that is how I pack with that. And I'll zip that back up. And then I also have in here, um, this is my hat for plein air. It's so fun to get cute floppy straw hats and whatever, but I've traveled with them and I'll tell you, it's a nuisance. <laughs> They're adorable. Um, and if you're gonna go somewhere and buy a special hat, then just have them ship it home. Uh, pack, pack something that you can scrunch up, you don't care. It's just, I've probably done hundreds of videos with this Raven Lunatic hat. You've probably seen me wearing it many times. It's, it's great. Um, I have a, a second, actually this is for me a third tripod pack. That way if, I, uh, if I'm just sitting at a table and I need to talk to you guys or, um, you know, I can grab it like this to my tripod, my regular tripod that's holding the camera right now. And I can bend my camera this way and that and try to get special angles. And it's small, it doesn't take up a lot of weight. This is one of my other tri uh, tripods. I also have a waterproof holder thing. This is for cell phones and I had this when I kayaked and um, I use it to put my camera in. So if I happen to be out or I'm worried about the rain and I am filming, I'll just put my camera right inside this bag and then proceed to film. Um, so that's important. In here, I want to talk about chargers. I am only going to Ireland this upcoming visit, but you want to double check um, if the, tra the country that you are traveling to has different outlets. So I have, this is the regular outlet plug-in thing for United States, and so I also have a USB port in here. So I don't need to bring a second um, block for my phone charger cord if I want to plug that in. And then in this one, I have um, the UK, since I'm traveling to Ireland, these are the plugins that I need for that. So I can just put these all together. And there were more in this little kit and they kind of stacked out further. I don't need to bring all those, just the one to where I'm traveling. Put it back in its little case and that is all set. So just make sure where you're going that you know what to do for those um, adapters. Um, one more thing. If I get the opportunity to do moonlight painting or a nocturne, I have a light that I you can order these um, through sweetwater.com. I should get paid for all these, seriously. Uh, <laughs> this clamps right onto my easel, and this is the light. There's a button here, and this is a music stand light, okay? So movable neck, and it only lights up my canvas and palette. So, the rest of my vision, can I can see the night sky or the full moon or whatever, and this only lights up what I need it to on my painting so it doesn't upset the whole balance of things. Separately, I keep all the AAA batteries down here because if you leave them in the light, they will corrode um, unless you use your moonlight light all the time, which I don't. So I make sure every time I take them out. Another thing, when you fold this up and you put this away, the button I found often gets pushed. So if you do get one of these, just take the batteries out. Um, they'll, otherwise you could go to paint next time and you're not, no light. <laughs> it's frustrating. That happened to me once, so I was gonna do a video. It was really aggravating. Okay, so that is in this pack. I also have for my own work, um, my date books and calendar and all that. Some people do that on their phone, but I feel like I stare at my phone enough. I don't want to stare at it any more longer than I have to. Okay, so that's in this pack. 
on. I will put this in. I like to keep things that I know are gonna be taken out, possibly at the airport. I like to just keep them right on top. Uh, and I will talk a little bit more about that in the studio when I'm showing you how to pack for plein air. So that is gonna go in like that. And then I will show you all of what I'm bringing in my clothes. All right, so you can always do laundry when you get to where you're going. I bring along a pair of yoga pants for jammies. I also, I use them for jammies, but if I need to wear them anywhere else for whatever reason, um, I do have them. They are socially acceptable, at least sort of. Okay, so I roll them up like that. Jeans, this is a particularly lightweight pair of jeans. And I should be wearing these to travel, but I'm not worried about it because they are so lightweight. But um, for travel, I'm wearing a pair of cargo pants because I want the access to all the pockets for my driver's license and things like that. Um, but everything you want to be supremely comfortable because the last thing you want to deal with when you're traveling is discomfort. Okay, so the way I lay out my shirts to pack, I have a, a lightweight hoodie right here. And I'm gonna put that down first because I want the hood on the bottom. And I'm not worried about the arms because I will fold those all in when I'm done. I have a jacket here. It's a pretty lightweight jacket, but I can wear it on top of just regular t-shirts. I know Ireland's gonna be about 50 degrees while I'm there, 50, 60. So I wanna be able to dress in layers. I'm only bringing two t-shirts, not counting the ones that I'm wearing. I'm wearing a black t-shirt. And I wanna make sure everything coordinates, so I just color block. I wear solid colors. I don't really, I don't have any prints or plaids or anything else in mind. Lay the t-shirt out flat. Colors are simple, blacks, darks. One of the main things you wanna pay attention to when traveling for um, plein air painting is not to wear bright colors. Do not wear fluorescents, bright pinks, neons, corals, because they bounce back up into the canvas. If you're wearing a bright neon color, it's gonna show up on your white canvas as you're painting and it can alter your color choices. So that's important to pay attention to. Okay, so I have my t-shirts all laid out. I'm gonna one by one fold their arms in, just diagonally. You can do it straight, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> These are all cotton, so they can wrinkle and it's, it doesn't really show. I don't pack a skirt because I, at least on this trip, I'm not planning to go anywhere that something really formal would be required. If you are, then I would strongly recommend skirts that can be wrinkled. You know, they have the wrinkled kind or just cotton, stretchy cotton fabric that doesn't wrinkle. Okay, so I get all my arms folded in, fold one half over, like that. Fold the other half over, like this. Fold it in half. Then I'm gonna take my hood and wrap it around everything. And that's it. So, I put that in there. How easy is that? That's it for clothes, I've got all of my you know, socks and underwear and everything in another bag. Um, one of these t-shirts and those leggings are fine for my pajamas. Due to the fact that I am plein air painting, I'm not gonna worry about swimming, so I'm not gonna need swim, swim gear. Um, so I just keep it really simple. Okay, so now packing these in here. Clothes. Like so. And on top of everything, this pack of electronic stuff. Another thing I don't bring is um, blow dryer, curling iron, um, things like that because you know, this is not a trip where I'm worried about all of that. <laughs> I can let my hair air dry at night, put it in a braid for bed, and um, by morning it's fine, it's dry, ready to go. Anything you can do to make your process 
easier and faster. Now this Osprey case here has little grooves. And I'll show you those. In here, there are little, little tiny grooves where there's, you can thread cords back and forth. And I'm gonna do that and I'll put my roll right here. I could always just put it in there right now. And then um, put my little pillow thing right around that. So that is all I need to do for my backpack. In this little pack, I have all my emergency travel items. So I just have my license and wallet in here, uh, hand lotion, just quick chapstick, a pen, some business cards, mints, and uh, that's it. what to pack when you're painting, and what, how to travel with your paints. Okay, so let's jump in. I am going to show you everything that I have in my backpack. Most of this is um, for what I would take if I was just gonna go out here and plan air paint. Um, some of the stuff I have here on the table, I'm just gonna have as examples to show you things you can take. This is pretty much what I'm going to take with me to um, all of my travels overseas, as well as um, just out in the field. Okay, so let's get going. First of all, the backpack. This is a Sienna backpack, plein air. It's designed for plein air painting, and it has a lot of pockets, and you can see that it expands. And I've actually, it has these um, straps here that you can pull tight and really kind of scrunch it down further if you want to try to fit it in the overhead bin on the airplane which it's fine, these do, and it fits great. Okay, so let me show you what I have, just starting from the outside. I'm gonna take everything out of here, one thing at a time, and explain everything you need. Okay, so starting with, I'll just start with the trappings. I have a bandana here, let me get my water bottle out of the way. This bandana I've actually found very useful um, when I've been in the intense heat. I can get this wet and tied around my neck, and it instantly cools me off. Um, you know, you just, you never know when you might need it. So um, I have some gloves here. These are those really cheap Walmart ones. I have these for when it gets cold and I'm out painting. Um, and I didn't do it yet with these, but what you can do is if you're right-handed, leave your left one alone. But if you're right-handed, what I will do is I will slip this on this first knuckle, just on the inside here, on these first two fingers and maybe my thumb, and then I'll bend them back so that just those tips of my fingers are showing so I can handle my paint, my brushes with a little bit more, you know, what I'm used to handling the brush. And so my hand still stays warm. And somewhere in here I have hand warmers. And so what you can do if your hands get really cold is break those hand warmers and put them in your gloves and keep them warm. So I'm gonna set everything off to the side here after I show you. Um, I just stuffed in the edge here a hat. This one I do like for travel. The Australian one is cool, but, um, for regular, if I'm gonna travel overseas, this one scrunches down. It's a nice, solid REI hat. Um, love these. And it, I like the little tie here because, especially in Ireland, it gets really windy and um, I like that for travel. I have, uh, you'd be surprised how when you're out painting, just to stop and take a break, there may not be anywhere to sit down. So I like to bring this little three-legged stool. It scrunches really small, has a Velcro strap here to make it stay nice and tight. And um, the outside of this Sienna backpack has this um, sort of stretchy cord and a little pocket down here. I'm sure it's for all kinds of options and things that you can do, but I like it for this. And you're gonna need a bungee cord. And so this is, to me, a really handy way to pack along your bungee cord. So I just, um, I open this up and I have strung my bungee cord through here. You're gonna need it for when you are setting up your equipment. I put my paper towels down below and I use the bungee cord for that. So my stool, I gotta get it out of here. Goes like that. There's that, just a nice little sturdy, I'm gonna put it on the floor. Three-legged stool and then of course your bungee cord. 
Okay, we're breaking it down. And then I've got my water bottle. And I personally like a water bottle with a filter because you never know where you're gonna be. Um, you know, so a filter is good. I do want to eventually get, I saw on a video this morning, scrunchy water bottles that you can scrunch down and they get really small. So I do kind of want one of those, but maybe I can get a filter to fit in those. Okay, so the outside pockets. Now, um, you'd be surprised the number of times that I have um, broke my own rules. <laughs> I'll get out of the car, I'll throw my keys right in my backpack, and then when it's time to go, they're way at the bottom, so it's really frustrating. So put your things that you're going to need right away, just right in maybe an outside pocket. So in here, I have my keys, and I do use a charger cord, and you need this. Um, you need a little charger block for... Um, if you're out there and maybe you're filming or your phone dies or whatever, have this fully charged and then you can plug in your cord into it. So I keep that handy. Um, I've got my wallet, everything important, right in this little pouch. My cell phone. Oh, food from the airplane. <laughs> Just a little snack. Sometimes you, you're out there all day and get faint, whatever. Granola bars work fine. Just anything that maybe I just kind of keep them always in my backpack every now and then because I'll switch them out. I'm, I'm always plein air painting, especially when the weather's warm. I have a couple little clips here. Never know when those might come in handy. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And that is it for this pocket. I'll put that back up. And then in this pocket, it's a mesh pocket. And I like that because I've been through many airports and they always take apart your backpack. And things that are, you know, have chemical residue, they have little sensors it's going to indicate. So I just leave it where it's handy so they can get at it. Um, this is my, I keep in my Ziploc bag, my container that had linseed oil in it. And then this is my container. It actually has Gamsol in it now just because I'm in my studio. <laughs> um, but you want one of these. And uh, don't get the cheap ones. Get a little bit nicer, plein air, um, canister for your paints. Inside here is a little mesh, sort of it has holes on the bottom of this basket. And you put the Gamsol, or I use Gamsol, Orderless Mineral Spirits. Um, that's this right here. What I love about this is overnight it'll separate. So you got all the grossness down below and up above is all clear, fresh, brand new stuff. So when you're traveling, you can't obviously bring the thinner with you, but you can pick some up when you get there and then you just, you're good to go every day. It's a nice fresh. Make sure that when you buy these two, that you get one with a good rubber gasket and that that is always in its little uh, trench inside here. Cause if that little rubber ring is off a little bit and you put the lid on, clamp it down, put it back in your bag, it can leak. And um, also keep an eye on this. These are these rubber gaskets are replaceable. I've heard that they can break down over time. I have had mine now for years and I haven't seen it crack at all. So um, I don't know, <laughs> maybe soon, but we'll see. Maybe they'll get me through another season. So that is my uh, chemical. And I bring along some extra Ziploc baggies and things. Hi, <laughs> I have this one for my cell phone. If I want to just, it's like a necklace thing. I actually use this kayaking, but you can put your phone in here, put it inside your clothes, it stays nice and dry and safe. Um, so that's that. I have a few baggies in here, but you want to definitely keep these in a secure container like this. All right, so that is it for that pouch. Now right on the outside again, I have really important things in the outside like emergency care items, personal care, things like that, that I'm gonna to wanna to reach in and grab right away. Number one being a raincoat. And I have obviously never taken this out of its case, but it's especially when we go to Ireland or um, other places, we're gonna want that. And um, I keep a Ziploc baggie of business cards and I have given these out many, many times when I'm out painting. And then I've got this nifty little bag here, get this out of the way, of emergency care items. And you can get little teeny first aid kits and that's probably not a bad idea. I've never had a need for one, but if it makes you feel better, then just do it. So this is my hand warmer. Um, I don't know, I guess I have more business cards. I have a few Band-Aids in here. I've, I have actually had times where maybe I break a nail and it starts bleeding or whatever. So keep a Band-Aid, a few Band-Aids. I have a few Q-tips. Um, sometimes you can paint with them too, and I do get really neat effects with that. 
I have a hair tie because my hair can drive me crazy out there. The wind is blowing. Um, some rubber bands, never know when you might need one. I have some rubber gloves. I don't like to rub my brushes right into my hand like this when I clean them. So I will throw on a rubber glove just on my left hand and wash my brushes that way. I keep a teeny little bar of soap for washing my brushes. You can bring, um, you get those travel soap containers and put a bar of soap in there if you want to do that. Um, a little mirror. If you are actually venturing out into the wilderness, a mirror and a compass can save your life. So you really want to learn how to use them. You know, obviously you can flash the, you know, for survival. Um, chapstick, a pen. <laughs> it is um, just insect repellent. It's a teeny little canister of bug spray. Uh, I do also carry in here and get the afterbite solution. And it's about the same size, like a big chunky marker and keep it in your bag too, in case you do get uh, mosquito bites, it, depending on where you are. If you're down deep south, south where they have rattlesnakes, you may want to get a snake bite kit. <laughs> um, one tip about painting in where they have snakes, rattlesnakes, um, if you smell cucumbers, you are by a den of rattlesnakes, so stay away. They will strike and babies are more potent than their moms. Okay, so that takes care of the outside pockets. I'm gonna kind of move some of the stuff out of the way and get to the inside. And I lay it down because the, um, cause it just zips open. And I love that feature about these backpacks. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Now I like to carry both oil paints and watercolors. So my backpack is a little bit fuller than what yours might be if you're just gonna do oil paints. Um, so starting with what's on the outside here, and I started with these right here because as I get down, there's, I mean, these are in no order of whatever. This is a nifty little device. Uh, it opens like this. And along the side here, you have different sizes on both sides of your standard paintings, like an 11 by 14, and you can move the little slide thing up to fit the 11 by 14 size or eight by 10 or whatever. Uh, you can turn it then and look at your scene that you want to paint to the appropriate size that you're going to paint on. Like if you want to see, okay, here's the trees, here's that cliff, here's the water as it comes down. And then you, you can make your composition sort of by looking through here. And then you take this and here's the sketchbook. You lay it down in your paper and you draw your rectangle. If you're doing an eight by 10, just draw around there. And then you put this down and you sketch your scene based on what you saw looking through here. Okay, now another neat little thing about this is these are always just a neutral middle of the range gray. And they did that because, and they put a hole in the middle. So when you're looking at your scene, you can look through this hole right here in the middle and get a try to get an accurate color and or value looking through here. And it'll, it'll kind of isolate exactly what it is you're looking at. And there's a few holes. You can actually hang this one by something, but so that is there to help you with that. And these are nifty little things. They're not that expensive and they're good to just throw in your backpack. So watercolor, I have one of these little canvas roll up things uh, like this and you just open it up and I have all my brushes and pencils and everything I'm gonna need for doing my watercolors and drawing. One of the things that I really try to teach and encourage people to do is do, keeping a little journal of your travels and just ideas and drawings and sketches. Especially, you know, writers will often whip out their little notepad and write down sentences or ideas or things that inspired them. Artists should do the same thing. So I always try to keep pencils handy. I've got in this little pouch at the end, erasers, pencil sharpeners, whatever, it's all there. So you, it, I have a pencil sharpener in here, just a standard one. I'm not sure that you can travel with those either because it does come equipped with a razor blade. So you may have to pick one of those up when you get to where you're going, but you know, such is life. So that is that. And I'll set that off to the side. Set my drawing stuff down here. I'm gonna show you at the end all of the stuff laid out. And then I have my watercolor palette and you can get smaller ones for travel, but you know, I've got all my colors in here and it's really lightweight. So I just pack it, it doesn't take up much space. So this is what I bring for that. And then this is my uh, journal, my sketch journal. 
And you can find this one I found at Barnes and Noble and I really like it because you know what? Let's face it, it looks cool with the leather. <laughs> but I also like that it is on the toned paper. So I can do my sketches like this and then add the highlights. And so I kind of have that, it's like toning a canvas. You already have that middle tone value done. So when you add the highlights and a little bit of shadows, it kind of has that really neat sculptural feel. So this one's coming with me. You can get smaller ones too. So there's that. And another thing I wanted to show you about these is you can take clear gesso. This is clear acrylic gesso, uh, but Liquitex makes these. And just put a thin coat on a page. You can do it right over a drawing too, and you can do a little bit of painting, a little bit of oil painting on it if you want. I wouldn't, you know, suggest the Campasto paint, but you can do a little bit, just a little of the either oil paint if you put some of this gesso down, or um, you can even do watercolor, but I wouldn't do the gesso if you're gonna do a little bit of watercolor touch-ups. Not washes, don't do big washes on this. All right, so here we are getting down another layer. Move this one this way. Always bring your roll of paper towels. And if you, if you find this too big for your backpack, there's nothing that says you can't cut this in half and scrunch it down, or I've folded them in half before. It doesn't matter, because you're gonna rip them off and use them as rags, so you can do that. Um, now, they always will go through your painting bag when you're going through the airport. So, and I was scolded at one airport because mine were way down at the bottom and they had to rummage through everything. So just keep it at the top so they don't have to take everything out, which they probably will anyway. Um, so I keep all my paints in a scrunchy uh, Ziploc baggie. Now this bag is, it's, it, it's showing extra paint in here because I do want to bring a few extra colors than what I normally use. But the key ingredient of this entire bag is what's in this little Ziploc bag. Inside here, and you can find this, I will put a PDF of this below, but you're going to want to print off this document, okay? So you're going to travel. Airports do not call them paints. <laughs> These are called artist pigments. They really, really don't like paints. So call them artist pigments. And this says, the U.S. Department of Transportation defines flammable liquids as those with a flash point of 140 degrees Fahrenheit or below. This gives you the information that they need to know that these are not going to ignite, okay? So you have phone numbers here, you have all of the information. You can, I will give you this and I will leave blank down here. To contact this traveler, dial da 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 da. You can just write that in, write in your own name, phone number, whatever. So print that out. Keep it in a separate Ziploc baggie and then put it in your bag of paints, okay? Now, if you are going to check your bags, still do this and still put your paints in a Ziploc baggie, but the difference is, is you can take the 150 milliliter tubes of paint. I, if you're gonna check, bring your bag up on the plane with you, you can only do the smaller sizes, okay? Take okay? note. <laughs> Um, all right, so this is my essential bag. These are the paints that I will take with me wherever I go. And in every one of my videos, I, may, I have a list down below of the paints that I use. And I will again, I'm gonna include all of this stuff in a list, um, a PDF, and that way you can print it out if you want. So that is all of these. I will show you what I am, my, my important ones are. So I, starting at the top of my canvas, I have just a little tube of white. And you know, most places you go, you can buy more paints. So don't feel like, oh, I'm gonna use more than more of that white, you know, than that. You just buy some more. I'm gonna be spending a month in the UK and I'm pretty sure that I'll go through this, but they have more there. <laughs> so starting at the top of my palette, then I will, um, I use cadmium yellow medium and I use all Gamblin. Um, this is yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, alizarin permanent. It's the same as alizarin crimson. It just has a better light, light fastness. And then phthalo green. Okay, those are the, with those colors, there pretty much isn't anything I can't do. But <laughs> I want to play. There, I'm going to be places where the water is just turquoise. Um, if you're interested in some of my workshops, you gotta check out my website and I'll put a link below. Uh, I have 
really gorgeous workshop. I'm so excited. I'm taking all these paints up because I want to tell you what else. So I do want to try uh, an ivory black because you can get some beautiful greens with by mixing yellow as well as mixing some um, cadmium red lights or mediums with it. You can get some interesting browns that way too. So I do have my cadmium red light here and I have uh, transparent red oxide. And there are some permanent magentas, uh, quinacrone violet, things like that, that I have uh, magenta here. Uh, this is a phthalo turquoise. Gonna play with that a little bit. Cobalt violet, cobalt blue, and a manganese blue. So those are colors that you just can't get with the standard tubes that I have packed. So there's that. And then I put it all in this Ziploc baggie with the printout. All right, so there's that. Okay, now to carry the wet paintings home or around or whatever, I bring uh, this Raymar travel pack. And this one I bought is an eight by 10. It's a heavy corrug corrugated plastic tent. So you open it up and they have slots, plastic slots here. And what I do is I can get two eighth inch masonite panels back to back, um, two, four, six, maybe even eight. Um, you can put in different sizes too. It, in this case, because it's eight inches across, I can do eight by eights or six by eights or however configuration you want to get. Um, this is just a gesso board. You can get this uh, quarter or eighth inch masonite gessoed. Some of these I make myself. This is just gessoed on birch, uh, eighth inch birch. You can get masonite, you can uh, glue linen over it, which I've done to, uh, on a several occasions. Just glue linen down and um, press them between books, whatever. This one was just gessoed. So it's great to have these for travel. Uh, I do plan on doing a little, a little bit of moonlight painting when I'm out and about. So I bought this from Sweetwater. The links are down below. This is a light, and Sweetwater is a company that makes music stand lights. So this clips above my easel, and you can adjust this thing, of course. And I always take the AAA batteries out. I wanted to welcome you to my video here, um, painting a twilight scene on a summer solstice. This is the light that I use when I'm painting a plein air at night. Uh, it's a solar inflatable, that's the solar panel. You can adjust the intensity of the light. It's pretty cool. Um, then this is what I clip onto my easel. It is a music stand light and you can adjust how strong the light is on your canvas. Like that. I keep them in this PVC canister. You can buy these. Um, for brushes, I only take just a few basics. Two, four, six, eight, a couple of sixes. That's it. Um, now, you are, it's told you cannot travel with palette knives. I have done plastic palette knives really just for cleaning my palette off. If you're going to check your bags, then you can obviously put a palette knife in the bag and that's fine. Um, I don't know if all airports say no to palette knives, probably, but I just don't bring them. You can always pick one up wherever you are. Uh, and then I have a little liner brush for me for signing or for twigs or whatever. So that's that. Now the nifty thing about this uh, is, is there's a keyhole in it. So on my palette box down below here, this is my Open M box, okay, on who that I put there. I put the screw in my palette box and I can hang my brushes just right off to like that when it's open and I'm painting. So there's my brushes and this is my palette box. What I love about this is it literally weighs a pound and a quarter. So nice and little. There's an extension here in the back like this and you put it on the side over here like this while you're painting. Okay. So there's a little lip at the bottom you can lean your brushes on. I put my palette clip um, cups right here for my linseed oil. And these, of course, you can adjust the, um, the, the opening and closing. And the, the canvas that you're painting on, or the panel, is held on with these brackets right here. And on the back, there's adjustable wing nuts that move back and forth. 
And then this device here just clips onto a standard tripod. And I like this one because it is short and squatty and super heavy duty. Start out with just a simple tripod. And then I have my open box M. Open it up, I'm all set. Super easy. My brushes, they have a keyhole. And this is how I carry my wet paintings and my panels that I need in my Raymar panel box carrier. Take my roll of paper towels on a bungee cord. And my little canister of Odo the Sminnow Spirits that I hang up right on this little screw. My container. Today I'm going to be using some liquid instead of <clears throat> linseed oil because it helps the paint to dry a little bit faster. Especially when I'm out plein air painting, I prefer to have the paint dry faster. Titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, phthalo green, and alizarin crimson. And that's it, I'm ready to go. A couple of extra items that I just wanna to call to your attention to. If you are traveling and you're not gonna fly, I like to put my linseed oil in, this is a small agave container. Sometimes linseed oil comes in small, bottle, small bottles and you can use that too. So that's a handy little thing because there's just the one little spout. Um, also, if these kind of coats, you never know when the weather can change. I like these coats because you can scrunch these up really really small and put them in a ziploc baggie take all the air out and all that and pack it really tight in your backpack and you really do want to have that because you never know when the weather's going to change and so you want to be prepared for that it, a nice outing can quickly turn pretty sour if, if you have conditions that are difficult all right well if you enjoyed this video and you got a lot out of it go ahead and show your support by liking and subscribing i really appreciate that and share these with your friends I'm going to be sharing this video quite a bit as it is very useful and these are questions I always get asked. All right, you guys, thanks so much. See you next week. The region and its bustling markets are just waiting to be explored and painted. The region of the lot is full of beautiful landscapes, dramatic gorges, and slow-moving rivers. Les Vicuvons is situated within the protected boundaries of Cassé de Quercy Regional Natural Park, set between the Dordion and Garion River. The content of the workshop will be presented in a workbook printed and given to each participant. At this workshop, I will be doing a portrait demo one evening, as well as a nocturne demo as the time and weather allows. The intention is for this to be an artistic holiday, not to exhaust, but to inspire. I will meet you where you are and help guide you where you'd like to go with your artistic journey.
And what trip to France would be complete without a stop by Paris? I am offering, at no extra charge for you, a four-day excursion to the heart of Paris. We will tour the Louvre, Musée d'Orsay, the Palace of Versailles, Notre Dame, and just take our time relaxing and enjoying beautiful Paris. You cover your own expenses, lodging, transportation, museum tickets, and as a group, we will tour these most beautiful locations and discuss the art together and paint and just enjoy each other's camaraderie. Sign up today. <laughs>